Afternoon everybody, I'm Jack and this is Rob Tropical Living. Thanks for joining me today. Um, it's been a great weekend here. Um, sun's been out. I feel like I've repowered up on my vitamin D after not getting any for two weeks. And lots of good fruits and uh, vegetables in my system. Been eating really, really clean. Been eating like a madman. I've almost been on a binge. I've been eating fruit like crazy this weekend. I've been eating, I don't usually eat after dinner, but I usually two or three hours after dinner this weekend, I've been eating big bowls of banana ice cream, massive amounts of mangoes, so all is good in my world. Anyhow, I thought I'd go ahead and do like a little bit more of a talk on this Blue Zone thing and just kind of give you a summary of uh, what some of the findings were in this, but I would really encourage you to get the book, um, The Blue Zones by Dan Bootner. And there's also, I've got the second one too, the Blue Zone Solutions by the same guy. You can um, actually, uh, you know, search him. There's some videos out there too. I think there's a TED Talk, a couple of videos out there. Bootner Butner, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but really good book. So uh, I kind of did something dumb. I, I was almost finished with it anyway. The first book, which I bought in hard copy, going to the farmer's market on Friday morning. I took it with me, so I, I was stopping by somewhere. I was going to read for a little while, and I read for a little while before the market. And I either put it down at a stall at the market or I left it in the taxi uh, under my bags of food when I was coming home. So anyway, not a big deal. I would have liked to have kept a copy and I'll probably buy another one. But um, a lot of the information is in the second book, which is the Blue Zone Solutions. Um, I won't linger, but I just want to read to you um, some of the commonalities they found at, um, at the different at the five, the five different Blue Zones. And the Blue Zones are... And something is wrong with my, I just did this, something is wrong with my, um, my um, reader. What is the reader on here anyhow? Never mind. It's called the Power Nine. Um, and this is actually the five blue zones. Actually, there's five now. When they first did the first, the, the original book, there was only four, and they found another one. So let's see if I can, I'm sure I can remember these just off of my head without writing anything down. Um, Sardinia, which is an island off the coast of uh, Italy, and actually there are certain areas on the island of Sardinia where they have higher concentrations of centenarians and the you know people pockets of people that um, live have a longevity in there. And a lot of things, you know, a lot of time, a lot of um, a lot of this has changed with the younger generation because of uh, modernization and fast food and stuff coming in. The next one's Okinawa, and they have like huge. Uh, one of the big, biggest A&W root beer places in the world and massive amounts of fast food. So that's changing and um, it's going to probably, you're not going to find as many of these centenarians um, as you move on. So there is um, Sardinia, Okinawa, um, a, a group, um, a community of Seventh-day Adventists out in California, Loma, something Loma, California. Um, and... Oh, right here in Costa Rica, which I'm going to have to make an effort to get up there um, in the second half of the year in Nicoya. It's a certain area of Nicoya. They have, and they say that uh, that area, that a lot of it, they have a lot of Chorotega blood in them. So they got some uh, uh, native blood in them and just from their habits. They've been kind of, and all of these um, communities have been mostly isolated or, or several of them through the years so they didn't have a lot of uh, influences from the outer world we all know how well that works out and then the fifth one that was in the second book is Ikaria Greece um, now some of the things I'm going to talk about I'm going to give you what they're doing on the food no I'm not about to change my lifestyle and I think but it, it just gives you gives you an idea that there's more to it than just the eating because none of them eat as clean as most of us talk about eating like in a raw vegan lifestyle but I haven't found any um, long-term groups that there have been studies done on or any civilizations that have done this you know for a period a, a very long period of time so you know take what and, and a lot of it you know some of the things they don't they're not all vegan most of them are not vegan, but they, it is a very high plant-based uh, lifestyle. So, you know, take the generalities out of it and take a look at the big picture. And this is the commonalities that, are, that have allowed a lot of these people to, you know, live as long as they have. And this is what's called the Power Nine um, that, that this uh, team of experts came out with um, of just the different things that they all seem to do. Move naturally. The world's longest lived people don't pump iron, run marathons or, jo marathons, or join gyms. Instead, they live in environments that constantly nudge them into moving. 
they grow gardens and don't have mechanical conveniences for house and yard work. Every trip to work, to a friend's house, or to church occasions a walk. Now that's one thing I'm finding really big. I do, and I'll talk, you know, that's part of mine. I'm kind of have figured out, well, what's my blue zone? What am I doing? And, you know, how, where can I add to it? And what is my base that keep, you know, where I feel like my wellness comes from? And I hope it will continue. But every single one of these groups, they walked a lot and they garden. And when I say garden, I don't mean getting out there and putting around in like a little five by seven garden, which is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Most of us that live in houses, but that makes me really want to have a massive, a, a, an actual garden where you're able to go out there. I could just see that. There's a real zen to that. There's a lot of common sense to it. And just when it comes to well-being, I think it's wonderful. You know, these people are walking about five miles a day. Um, I heard them saying on average, you know, a lot of, in Sardinia, they go, they walk in the mountains a lot on incline. And that steady, that steady exercise, not pounding on the joints, just seems to be suitable, perfect for longevity. And they all garden. I've always said, you know, there's something about, like, work that's just gratifying, you know, that you can't get through exercise. So that is something I would really like to see in my life. And don't be discouraged or don't jump on these. You know, you see these programs where people go, you know, they're really out of shape, like the, the P290s or the TRXs. And no, TRX is actually the pulley system that I like. But, you know, people try to go to these very intense workouts um, after they've been sedentary. And it just, it's not really great for them. You know, heavy exercise tends to cause inflammation. And it's just, you just don't see this in the people that are living to be a very long age. Second thing they have in common, I won't go through each, I won't stop and linger at each one. Purpose. The Okinawans call it I ikige, ikiga, akige. And the Nikoyans call it plan de vida. For both, it translates to why I wake up in the morning. In all blue zones, people had something to live for beyond just work. Research has shown that knowing your sense of purpose is worth up to seven years of extra life expectancy. Very important. Know what you know. Having having a reason to get up in the morning, um, knowing why you're doing, why you're here, what you're doing with all of this. Number three, downshift. Even people in the blue zones experience stress, which leads to chronic inflammation associated with every major age-related disease. The world's longest-lived people have routines to shed that stress. Okinawans take a few moments each day to remember their ancestors. Adventists pray. Ikarians take a nap and Sardinians do happy hour. Listen, I keep saying that over and over. All this, you know, if it, I don't care how clean you get on the food or whatever, stress kills. If you're living, if you're running around in this rat race, um, you're doing very little for yourself um, by just having these horribly stressful lives. If you don't have any way to blow off the stress, I'm not sure how much the food is really helping. It doesn't hurt, I mean, you don't want to compound it and eat bad food and have stress, but you know, you got to get rid of the stress. That is actually worse than cigarettes, alcohol, a lot of food, whatever. Stress kills more than anything else. Um, this one's a little bit different. Now, this isn't talking about calorie restricting, but it makes sense. The 80% rule. And it, Harahachi Bu, the 2,500-year-old Con Confucian mantra spoken before meals on Okinawa reminds people to stop eating when their stomachs are 80% full. The 20% gap between not eating hungry and being full could be the difference between losing weight and gaining it. People in the blue zones eat their smallest meal in the late afternoon or early evening, and then they don't eat any more the rest of the day. Now, that's not as relevant for us because we, like a lot of you that are watching me, eat a fully plant-based diet. If you're not eating a fully plant-based diet, if you're still, you know, um, kind of transitioning, this might be something to think of, though, because when you're not eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, those calories can add up fast, a lot faster than you um, actually know. Uh, number five is what they call plant slant. Um, and here again, if you're if you're eating fully raw, you know your mileage may vary, um, because th they talk a lot about the eating of the beans in this book, and all these cultures seem to be eating beans on a regular basis. Beans, including fava, black, soy, and lentil, are the cornerstone of most centenarian diets. Meat, mostly pork, is eaten on average only five times per month, and in a serving of three to four ounces, about the size of a deck of cards. That's kind of what I've talked about here before. Now, yeah, they eat a lot more um, fast food and stuff here, but when you go to a typical uh, little restaurant, which is called a soda, 
the meat the meat is not the main focus so and these people you know most of them uh, don't have the money and that's a luxury so they're not eating a lot so the the takeaway from that is they're eating a mostly plant-based uh, lifestyle you know take this one what they're worth wine at five people in all blue zones even some Adventists drink alcohol moderately and regularly moderate drinkers outlive non-drinkers the trick is to drink one to two glasses per day with friends and or with food and no you can't save up all week and have 14 drinks on Saturday um, you know for somebody like me I'm not necessarily saying that's a bad thing but for somebody that's uh, drank so much in my life and potentially done damage to his body that's one I probably won't be going back to I've said before I'm not saying I would never drink again you know if I went to Napa Valley or somewhere in Europe and have a have a glass of wine because I don't have that problem um, of having one but it's probably that would be the only exception would be a good glass of wine but yeah you know, I just don't I don't think it's actually I think a lot more is made of the wine thing than um, than it really is I don't think you actually you don't need alcohol in your life um, to be healthy or just that's just my take on it number seven the right tribe the world's longest lived people choose or were born into social circles that support healthy behaviors Okinawans create moais groups of five friends that commit to each other for life research shows that smoking obesity happiness and even loneliness are contagious by contrast social networks of long-lived people favorably sh shape their health behaviors community all but five of the 263 centenarians that we interviewed belong to a faith-based community denomination doesn't seem to matter research shows that attending faith-based services four times per month will add four to 14 years of life expectancy and then the last one is loved ones first uh, successful centenarians in the blue zones put their families first they keep aging parents and grandparents nearby or in the home which also lowers disease and mortality rates of their children they commit to a life partner which can which can add up to three years of life expectancy and they invest in their children with time and love which makes the children more likely to be caretakers when the time comes yeah this single guy I won't have caretakers when the time comes I'll just be wandering around on my own but you see you know like I say those are just something to these are these are just you know some of the commonalities in there so the you know what do we take from that and what's my blue zone the second part the second book talks about creating your own blue zones now I need the community but for right now and I found this out you know getting back the other day after being away for two weeks and not feeling so well the cornerstone of my blue zone which needs you know some more things added to it but the cornerstone of my blue zone is long walks fresh fruit and sunshine that's just that's just perked me right up you know I wasn't moving enough in the States I took a few walks but when I'm here I walk I have reason to walk I don't just okay let's go take a walk and just ramble around I got places to go and I cover a lot of uh, territory so actually my legs have been a little sore last couple of days you know tons of fresh fruit and I love my bananas they'll always be a base so I can get plenty of calories but uh, just be living on I don't know I was just missing my stuff I was missing my access to having orange juice all the time I was missing my mangoes um, I just need fresh fruit all the time and I need lots of it and the sunshine you know I could even just feel myself perking up from getting a dose of a uh, good dose over the past I've gotten Sun Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday every day since I've been back Friday Saturday and Sunday were a little warmer now I would like I say I mentioned before but I'm I, I would take this very cautiously because I don't want to just pick just to pick or out of desperation but yeah I need some community um, and I'm keeping my eyes open for that and when this job's over in two months I will be out going out in different places checking out some different areas of Costa Rica you know looking to see if I can find uh, uh, my tribe people that are a little bit more like-minded like me you don't have to be exactly like but you know it'd be nice um, and other than that I, I think I've just got I've created a nice little blue zone for myself already down here you know breathing meditation water um, yeah I walk a lot but I do other exercise too I do yoga I do some uh, weight bearing exercise which is important for the bones bone health as we get older and 
Um, breathing, I said breathing. Um, it's just, you know, my stress is low. I think possibly that's about, um, I didn't have a lot of stress. I, I have had stress down here, but it's been mostly self-imposed stress. Now, when I went to this lifestyle, like I say, a few things I did right about at the same time, like when I came to this lifestyle, I just uh, banished stress. I don't allow stress. I don't even know how to explain that. People just don't get it. I'm just like, I don't allow stress. If something starts to feel like stressful, I assess the situation. I figure out if there's something I can do about it. If there's not, and if there's not, I let it go. And if there is, I do what I can do about it. Other than that, I just won't allow stress. Um, so that's probably as much a part of my healthy life as eating the way I do now. But the eating probably led to me being able to pick up that mentality. You know, if my when your when your body's dirty, your mind is clouded. Um, so you, it's kind of like you know, you never know which one caused the other or which one came first. You know, did the mind clear out? and you know allow you to do these things express yourself in this way or or you know did they simultaneously happen i don't think so i think as my mind started clearing out getting a lot of the garbage out of my body that i came to some of these other truths and they're only truths for me i would just uh, like i said wanted to share that with you i would really encourage you to read the book look at it on youtube look at some of his talks on youtube i think there's a good ted talk and, um, you know, try to establish your blue zone. But it can't be all about the food. Think about the other things that are necessary in your life and do what you got to do to get there because this, this, this vessel, we got to take care of it and it's important. You know, if you, I don't care if you're doing things for the best reasons in the world, well, the kids do this, well, the husband does this, well, I got to do this. If you, if you have a heart attack and drop dead, if you have a stroke and you're gone, game over game over it doesn't matter it doesn't matter your reasoning whatsoever so you have to do whatever you need to do whatever you can do to take care of your health to take charge of your health develop a blue zone for yourself I know I'm, I'm, I'm continuous continuing to do it and I wish in each and every one of you luck in doing it for yourself find that blue zone make your own blue zone anyhow I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video if you like it give me a thumbs up Hope you'll subscribe to the channel, and I hope you guys have a wonderful upcoming week. Peace.